Our next step in SPSS and introduction is to look at basic graphics because those are always a good first step in analysis. And the easiest way to do that in SPSS is with something called graph board templates. Really, you can just think of these as graphs made easy. The idea here is that if you set the levels of measurement in SPSS, then SPSS can suggest graphs that would be appropriate for those variables. Now in terms of level of measurement, remember SPSS uses three. Number one is nominal for different categories. Number two is ordinal for ranks. And number three is scales, that's for interval or ratio level measurements. And then when you're in the graph board templates, you have two basic choices. You have basic graphs, and those are where you choose the variables first that you wanna graph, and then SPSS will show you suggested graphs. You can see what you want to do with them. There's also an option for detailed, and this is where you choose the graph style first, and then you choose the variables that go into it. Now, these aren't exclusive. You can bounce back and forth between the two tabs, and it'll be easy to see how it works if we just go to SPSS. If you're logged into datalab.cc, then you should be able to download the exercise files from the same page that this video is on, open up this file, spss01 underscore three underscore one underscore graphboard.sps. It's a syntax file, and let's see what it looks like. Syntax file that you've opened looks kind of complicated, but this is really because I want to have a written record of the same things that we're going to do with the drag and drop menus in the graph board. We do need to open a data set, and as I mentioned before, depending on whether you're on a Macintosh or on a Windows computer, the path to the data sets is a little bit different. And also depending on the version you're using, I'm using 22. And so if you're using something else, change that number right there, most of it should be the same. And you can run this command and open up the data set and activate it. Now I've already done that. I'll show you. There's my data set right there. It's the demo.save. And we can come down here to variable view and see the levels of measurement that SPSS has assigned to these. Most of them are scale. We have a few that are ordinal. We have only one variable in this data set that's truly coded as nominal, and that's gender, which is actually a string variable in this case. But I'll go back to the syntax. Now, I have some rather complicated syntax here, but what you'll see is that when we use the menus, it's actually pretty simple. The first thing we're going to do is make a chart of age. But I'm going to come up here to graphs, to the graph board template chooser. And when I come to that, you see I'm in this tab of basic graphs. And this is where I choose a variable. I'm going to choose age right here. And it recommends three different kinds of charts, a dot plot, a histogram, and a histogram with a normal distribution. We'll take the very first one that's available, dot plot, and hit OK. It puts it in the output window, which I have to maximize. And there it is. It's a dot plot. It looks a lot like a histogram of age and years. So it goes down to 18 years. It looks like it goes up to about 77, 78. And it's an easy way to get a feel of the distribution that we're dealing with. Again, the command in text and syntax is complicated, but the graphical interface makes this very easy to do. I'll go back to the syntax for a moment. If you were to paste the syntax for that command, this is what you would see right here. And it's a way of saving it and you can modify it manually if you want. Now we'll do a histogram of age with a superimposed normal distribution. Again, I'll come up to graphs, to graph board template chooser. And this time, all I have to do is come over to the right. I click histogram with normal distribution and hit okay expand the output window. And it's really simple. Now both of those charts that I showed you were with age, which is a ratio level or scaled variable in SPSS terminology. We can also do this with categorical variables, I'll use gender and make a bar chart. Come back up to graphs, hit graph board template chooser. And when I come down to gender, you'll see that the recommended charts change because this time it knows it's a categorical variable. Now, if I had GPS data, I could put that in here. I can do a bunch of different things. I'm just gonna do a bar chart because that's the easiest to deal with. I'll hit okay. 
make the output window bigger. And there's my bar chart. And you see that in this particular data set, we have an almost exactly equal number of men and women or data on them. Now, those were the basic charts where you choose the variable first and SPSS recommends particular graphs. You can also do detailed charts. These are ones where you choose the style of chart first and then you fill in the variables. I'm going to do this again for a dot plot of income and then show you that it's really easy to modify it. I'll come up to graphs, to graph board template chooser. This time I'll go to the detailed tab, click on that. And I'm going to make a dot plot. So I'm going to scroll through this, you see we have a lot of choices. I'm going to choose dot plot. And then it's going to ask what I want to make a dot plot of. And I'm going to click on this. And I'm going to scroll to income. See the one that I want is right here household income in thousands. I can click OK. And then expand the output window. And here's my chart. It's a really basic chart. And you see that most of the people are at the low end, especially because this is hundreds of 1000s of dollars. So that's going to be a million dollars right there. But I want to show you an interesting thing about this. If we double click on the chart, that opens up the edit window and the graph board editor has some special options. For one thing, I can change the number of decimal places here, I just click on the decimals, come to format and change the minimum level, or rather the minimum number of decimals to zero. That's better. But a more interesting one is if I click on the dots themselves, they're done as points and the modifier is to pile them there are a few other modifiers that can be useful. One is to dodge them. And what that does is it puts them in the middle expanding out either way. It might be a little harder to make comparisons from one level to another. But it's an interesting kind of chart. I can click on it again. And we can do what's called jitter with a normal distribution. And that takes points with the same value and it kind of randomly spreads them out up and down. And again, you can see that we've got a whole lot there at the bottom. One other choice is jitter uniform, which makes them stay within certain boundaries. But it's hard to tell really how much things are spread out there at the bottom. So I actually prefer pile or I think dodge is interesting in this case. And so that's one way of using GraphBoard to both set it up and then to manually modify it by double clicking on the chart. Can okay, close this because I'm done with that. And you see I have the modified version right there. Now, we can get a lot more complicated. So for instance, I can make a scatter plot of age and income with colors for point density. There's a lot of options and you can explore them. This time I'm going to do a little bit differently. I'm just going to select this command. And again, the way I got these was by setting them up in the menus and then simply hitting paste. And it put the syntax into this syntax file so I could save it and run it later. And so I'm going to show you how that works. I've got the command here that I created using the graph board template chooser. And I'll simply come up and select run selection. And I maximize that window. And there you can see I actually have what's called a hex scatter plot. And it's showing a few different things. And it's a really neat way. And so you have a lot of options on the way you display things in the graph board template chooser. And while the code is complicated, the interaction with the menus is really simple. You can be creative and you can get different views on your data and try to get more insight as you're doing your analysis.